My name's Ollie and I work for the Alinjara Williwara Landscape Board in Sejuna, South Australia. In Pitjantjara language, Alinjara means north and Williwara means west. That's where we work, in the north and the west of the state. We want to tell you a story from just a part of this area, a part of the Great Victoria Desert. Over here we all know that it's not a desert, it's home to Alangu as well as others, Gugatha, Murni, Wirringu, Spinifex, Pilkey people and, and many others. It's Sandhill country, Spinifex country, Mali, Mulga and Oak country and it's bursting with important plants and animals. It's also where we're working really hard to stop the spread of the invasive weed, buffalo grass. For, for over a decade now, we've been working together over here in, in the southeastern part of the Great Victoria Desert with Oak Valley Ranges, Far West Coast Aboriginal Corporation Ranges, Yalata Ranges, uh, National Parks and others stopping the spread of buffalo grass further into the Great Victoria Desert. And we really wanted to share just a part of this story with you. So I sat down with some of the people that are doing this important work. Brandon and Charlie, rangers from the Far West Coast Aboriginal Corporation, and Alex from Alinjara, Wiliwara and Air Peninsula Landscape Boards. So you could hear the voices from people doing this work on the ground just over 250,000 square kilometres of ground. My name is Brandon Willis. Uh, I'm 31 years old, born in 91 in May. Uh, I work as a Far West Coast Ranger. Uh, my tribe is the uh, Mooning tribe in the uh, Nullarbor, Australian Bight. Uh, that's my mother's side, and my dad's side is the Gugula, Gugula tribe that's in this region as well, um, under the Far West Coast. My name is Alex Fraser. I uh, work for the Alentjara Willowara Landscape Board as a community project officer. Um, the AW region is pretty well the far west coast of South Australia, all the way up to the Northern Territory, WA, South Australia border. Um, so we cover quite a wide expanse of South Australia. Um, and buffalo grass is one project that we've been working on. So the area that we've been working in is the southeast corner of the Great Victoria Desert, which is Sandhill country, uh, which is typically comprised of open Mallee woodland um, with spinifex as the understory. And in those areas, the location of um, we work is the far west coast Aboriginal lands and the Maryland Kajaja lands. Um, <coughs> uh, the important of those areas is uh, the Yalabina area and the Yambara and the Nullarbor. In all these areas, that's, that's where we hunt and we, we gather our food and bush medicine and things like that. So um, with buffalo grass coming in, it could destroy all of it. Yeah, buffalo grass will destroy the millifowl because um, millifowl use all the dead sticks and twigs that's under the trees and drag them out and put in their nest. But if buffalo grass takes over that area, they won't be able to do that because they won't be able to get any twigs in that for their nest. Buffalo grass, if it comes into this area in the Far West Coast area, it will take over the native grasses, uh, replaces uh, bush food, and it will change changes fire and frequency and, and the behaviour, the, the horror, the bigger. Yeah. Well, the habitat uh, loses, well, loss for native animals and um, can affect the water places and creeks and rock holes as well. It really does affect the food and um, the native plants in the areas that, you know, it benefits our culture and it proceeds, you know, for thousands and thousands of years and now there's buffaloes coming in and it's making changes, mm. uh, negative changes. Mm. It could take over um, tracks that's leading to wood oil, the rock oil, and then you won't be able to get it's affecting the bush food and native food that we can't get to because of the buffalo. And I'm just saying that potentially it could be the buffalo that's pushing out the animals, 
But if it is, then that's we need to act on it. Mm. Act big because, like I said, it's gonna those food to benefit our culture for thousands, thousands of years. Now, a little plant called buffalo is gonna come along and affect that. So Yalabina and Yambara is a bit of a refuge. Um, it really doesn't have any buffalo grass um, within its borders, um, but yeah, it's definitely getting closer and closer. Um, and the work that we're doing along the railway line is holding it at bay a fair bit. Um, but yeah, there are areas that are quite difficult to get to um, there is a lot of traffic along um, those roads uh, coming from areas where there is a lot of buffalo grass. Um, things like trains, um, four wheel drive vehicles, um, feral animals can all transport the seeds uh, of buffalo grass and move them to areas where it hasn't yet been. And um, these buffalo grass seeds have a really long um, viability. So um, yeah, once that seed has dropped, they've got a seven year lifespan where um, at any point, if it does set in the soil over that seven years, um, yeah, a, a new shoot can, can grow and um, yeah, that whole cycle starts again. Usually along the side, side of the road with the water in push them down and we can see the, the ones that are closer to the road but we don't know what's out in the middle of the Nullarbor or out in the middle of Yumbra. We don't know mm. if it's there or not, you know. Mm. There's more areas we uh, cover to identify and buffer. There's only road sites that we only... So we just fight the ones that we can see at the moment. Mm. It's the only one we've got recorded at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Sandy country, there's sand dunes area. Mm. It'll take off from there. Mm. In November of 2021, we had those big rains, um, mm. those big summer rains, which um, was a big growing and flowering and seeding event for buffalo grass as well. So um, a lot of runoff um, picked up seed and transported it further down creek lines, further away from our eyesight. Um, so yeah, that's another challenge that we're facing at the moment. So you guys are managing, you, you're surveying for and you're treating buffalo grass infestations in really, really remote areas where you've got to bring everything in yourself. It comes from the Western Australian border right up into Melbourne. So along with a surveillance trip, we'll, uh, we'll monitor weather and weather station data. So really having a look at how much rainfall has dropped um, in the areas which, um, which might create a buffalo grass flowering event um, where the plant is green and it will, um, it will uptake the chemical that we're spraying on it. Um, otherwise, it's not really worth going all the way out there. Um, if, if, uh, if we go out there and all the plants have hayed off um, without any rain, um, then the chemical can't do its thing um, and we're not actually treating and destroying the plants. We had about 13 or 14 people mm. on the Aldea <coughs> Melbourne trip. Anywhere between six and eight vehicles, yep. um, two ATVs, quad, spray tanks, water mm. tanks. I think we definitely got over 10,000 litres. Mm. In areas where it's newly established, it quite likes disturbed soil. So um, areas where four wheel drives are, are constantly moving, um, changing the, the track um, graders, redoing the track itself, um, moving large amounts of soil it can sometimes set the buffalo grass seeds and all it needs is a little bit of rain. So we use a three part chemical mix um, in treating buffalo grass. Uh, that's comprised of glyphosate, flupropanate and pine oil. 
Um, pine oil has been a recent inclusion because what that does is that essentially dries and um, destroys the seed before it can set in the soil. So um, that combination of killing the plant through glyphosate, um, having a residual chemical sitting in the soil um, with flupropanate helps um, destroy any um, new shoots coming up. Um, because of recent rain and the pine oil, yeah, is really aims to reduce that seed bank um, through, uh, yeah, repeated spray efforts um, over the course of um, 12, 18 months. We're also um, burning some of the buffalo grass that we found to reduce the biomass of it so that when we come back and treat it with chemical, we don't need to use as much. So that communication. Um, it'll be good because we get followers down from the, if we can, from APY and Oak Valley, Clinton, Yellowtown. <coughs> we can start fighting before it gets too far down. Once that word gets out, and it's definitely someone going to have their open ears and say, all right, someone's working with Buffalo. And this and is working. a good mixture for them to work with. Yeah. Easy as that. Just yeah. the word of Buffalo. It's hard to, when we go out with 13, 13 people and everybody's all different. They all got their own ways of things and tactics. You'd say it's only eight days, but it turns out to be 13, 14 days, and then everything starts getting a bit <laughs> wild and weary. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we all settle down and pull our heads in and, and just fight it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not easy, is it? Cause it's it was a, it's the one we were supposed to go for, what, 10 days, I think it was, or what? I think it was supposed to be a week trip and it turned out to be 10 or 11 days. Yeah. 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 So what did you eat on the last few days? Oh, we had a bit left over. I think we were down to canned food. Yeah. There wasn't much <laughs> fresh food available. Yeah. <laughs> you were down to a bit too. But when, when you're out that remote, You've just got to keep going. Yeah. You've got to make the most of, of the time um, and the people that you've got out there. Yeah, and what you're there for. And it's just looking after each other and, and talking to each other when something goes wrong. Yeah, I think, we, I think we need a whole of landscape statewide approach where there's investment from all the different regions. Um, we know that there are a couple of key vector areas um, such as Port Augusta um, that can transport buffalo grass in any and which way. Um, so it'd just be great to have everyone on the same level um, investing time, um, investing money, investing resources. So um, yeah, we're, we're in the best position that we can to control buffalo grass. Um, it is a forever job, but um, until there are other methods of control, um, we have found that going out into these remote areas um, along the railway line and spraying does, does work. It is effective. Mm. Um, we've seen that um, in the last couple of years through... Um, constant control, constant surveillance, that we are reducing those numbers. Um, but yeah, it'd just be good to have, have buy-in from a lot of other regions. <coughs> Even overuse from data from different agencies as well, that's um, doing the same thing what we're doing. Like, we're going to see theirs, and they can see ours, ours you know, and then you can build a picture yourself, long story short. Yeah. Make those connections. Make those connections and data says a thousand words, you know. Like they say, a picture, mm. but a data too, does too. So we need to understand how, how they control the buffer in the area. And like acknowledgement that buffalo grass is threatening country. Mm. It's threatening native animals, native plants, the landscape as a whole. It's a bit of a ticking time bomb, isn't it? But well, we are tapping the issues. We're doing it on our own terms, you know, off our own backs. We're going out there doing it. 
what yeah. is God probably doing in their areas as well. Um, <clears throat> I can't say that we are proven, but we are making an improvement. Mm -hmm. We are doing it mm -hmm. practically. We're not waiting around for shit at the fans. We're actually doing it. But we're, we're, we're fighting the problem. Yeah. We're, we're getting to it. Just got to keep fighting. This generation today is fighting a buffle to uh, to benefit our kids' future to um, maintain this country because once we get a hold of this buffle, it, 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 it saves our kids um, putting their hard work and effort into it to maintain the buffle. So um, for me to maintain this country for my kid, I'll put in, uh, my heart and sweat into it to make sure everything it's made as water for my kids' futures.